Uttara Nikaya. Bhikkhu B. Body. The Book of the Eights. The First Fifty. I. Loving Kindness. Pali Versions. Pali English Version and Pali Devanagari Version. Loving Kindness. Thus have I heard on one occasion, the Lord was dwelling at Savathi in Jetta's Grove, Anathapindika's Park. There the Lord addressed the Bhikkhus. Bhikkhus. Dot. Venerable Sir, those Bhikkhus replied. The Lord said this. Dot. Bhikkhus. When the liberation of the mind by loving kindness has been pursued, developed, and cultivated, made a vehicle and basis, carried out, consolidated, and properly undertaken, eight benefits are to be expected. What eight? Dot. One sleeps well. One awakens happily. One does not have bad dreams. One is pleasing to human beings. One is pleasing to spirits. Devtas protect one. Fire, poison, and weapons do not injure one. And if one does not penetrate further, one moves on to the Brahma world. When? Because. The liberation of the mind by loving kindness has been pursued. Developed, and cultivated, made a vehicle and basis, carried out, consolidated, and properly undertaken, these eight benefits are to be expected. For one who, ever mindful, develops measureless loving kindness, the fetters thin out as he sees the destruction of the acquisitions. If, with a mind free from hate, one arouses love toward just one being, one thereby becomes good, compassionate in mind toward all beings. The noble one generates abundant merit. Those royal sages who conquered the earth, with its multitudes of beings, traveled around performing sacrifices. Dot. The horse sacrifice, the person sacrifice. Samapasa, Vijaypaya, Niragala. All these are not worth a sixteenth part of a well-developed loving mind, just as the hosts of stars cannot match a sixteenth part of the moon's radiance. One who does not kill or enjoin killing. Who does not conquer or enjoin conquest. One who has loving kindness toward all beings. Harbors no enmity toward anyone. Advertisement. Divine knowledge. Bhikkhus. There are these eight causes and conditions that lead to obtaining the panna fundamental to the Brahmacharya when it has not been obtained and to its increase. Maturation and fulfillment by development after it has been obtained. What eight? Dot. Here, a bhikkhu lives in dependence on the teacher or on a certain fellow monk in the position of a teacher, toward whom he has set up a keen sense of moral shame and moral dread, affection and reverence. This is the first cause and condition that leads to obtaining the panna fundamental to the brahmacharya when it has not been obtained and to its increase maturation, and fulfillment by development after it has been obtained. As he is living in dependence on the teacher or on a certain fellow monk in the position of a teacher, toward whom he has set up a keen sense of moral shame and moral dread, affection and reverence, he approaches them from time to time and inquires. How is this, Bhante? What is the meaning of this? Those venerable ones then disclose to him what has not been disclosed, clear up what is obscure, and dispel his perplexity about numerous perplexing points. This is the second cause and condition that leads to obtaining the panna fundamental to the Brahmacharya. Having heard the Dharma, he resorts to two kinds of withdrawal. Withdrawal in body and withdrawal in mind. This is the third cause and condition that leads to obtaining the wisdom fundamental to the Brahmacharya. Dot. He is virtuous. He dwells restrained by the Patimoka, possessed of good conduct and resort, seeing danger in minute faults. Having undertaken the training rules, he trains in them. This is the fourth cause and condition that leads to obtaining the Panna fundamental to the Brahmacharya. 
He has learned much, remembers what he has learned, and accumulates what he has learned. Those teachings that are good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, with the right meaning and phrasing, which proclaim the perfectly complete and pure Brahmacharya. Such teachings as these he has learned much of, retained in mind, recited verbally, mentally investigated, and penetrated well by view. This is the fifth cause and condition that leads to obtaining the panna fundamental to the Brahmacharya. He has aroused energy for abandoning harmful qualities and acquiring beneficial qualities. He is strong, firm in exertion, not casting off the duty of cultivating beneficial qualities. This is the sixth cause and condition that leads to obtaining the panna fundamental to the Brahmacharya. Dot. In the midst of the Sangha, he does not engage in rambling and pointless talk. Either he himself speaks on the Dharma, or he requests someone else to do so, or he adopts noble silence. This is the seventh cause and condition that leads to obtaining the Panna fundamental to the Brahmacharya. He dwells watching a rising and vanishing in the five aggregates subject to clinging. Such is form, such its origin, such its passing away. Such is sensation, such is perception, such are one's characteristics, such is consciousness, such its origin, such its passing away. This is the eighth cause and condition that leads to obtaining the panna fundamental to the Brahmacharya when it has not been obtained and to its increase, maturation, and fulfillment by development after it has been obtained. His fellow monks esteem him thus. This venerable one lives in dependence on the teacher or on a certain fellow monk in the position of a teacher toward whom he has set up a keen sense of moral shame and moral dread, affection and reverence. This venerable one surely knows and sees. This quality leads to affection, respect, esteem, accord, and unity. As this venerable one is living in dependence on the teacher or on a certain fellow monk in the position of a teacher, those venerable ones dispel his perplexity about numerous perplexing points. This venerable one surely knows and sees. This quality, too, leads to affection, respect, esteem, accord, and unity. Having heard the Dharma, this venerable, one resorts to two kinds of withdrawal. Withdrawal in body and withdrawal in mind. This venerable one surely knows and sees, this quality, too, leads to affection, respect, esteem, accord, and unity. This venerable one is virtuous. He dwells restrained by the patimoka. He trains in them. This venerable one surely knows and sees. This quality, too, leads to affection, respect, esteem, accord, and unity. This venerable one has learned much and penetrated well by view. This venerable one surely knows and sees. This quality, too, leads to affection, respect, esteem, accord, and unity. This venerable one has aroused energy for abandoning harmful qualities, not casting off the duty of cultivating beneficial qualities. This venerable one surely knows and sees. This quality, too, leads to affection, respect, esteem, accord, and unity. In the midst of the Sangha, this venerable one does not engage in rambling and pointless talk. Or he adopts noble silence. This venerable one surely knows and sees. This quality, too, leads to affection, respect, esteem, accord, and unity. This venerable one dwells watching arising and vanishing in the five aggregates subject to clinging. This venerable one surely knows and sees. This quality, too, leads to affection, respect, esteem, accord, and unity. These. Bikas.
are the eight causes and conditions that lead to obtaining the panna fundamental to the brahmacharya when it has not been obtained and to its increase, maturation, and fulfillment by development after it has been obtained. Advertisement. Displeasing. Bhikkhus, possessing eight qualities. A bhikkhu is displeasing and disagreeable to his fellow monks and is neither respected nor esteemed by them. What eight? Here, a bhikkhu praises those who are displeasing and criticizes those who are pleasing. He is desirous of gains and honor. He is morally shameless and morally reckless. He has evil desires and holds wrong view. Possessing these eight qualities, a bhikkhu is displeasing and disagreeable to his fellow monks and is neither respected nor esteemed by them. Bhikkhus, possessing eight qualities, a bhikkhu is pleasing and agreeable to his fellow monks and is respected and esteemed by them. What eight? Here, a bhikkhu does not praise those who are displeasing or criticize those who are pleasing. He is not desirous of gains or honor. He has a sense of moral shame and moral dread. He has few desires and holds right view. Possessing these eight qualities, a bhikkhu is pleasing and agreeable to his fellow monks and is respected and esteemed by them. Displeasing. Bhikkhus, possessing eight qualities, a bhikkhu is displeasing and disagreeable to his fellow monks and is neither respected nor esteemed by them. What eight? Here, a bhikkhu is desirous of gains, honor, and reputation. He does not know the proper time and does not know moderation. He is impure. He speaks much. And he insults and reviles his fellow monks. Possessing these eight qualities, a bhikkhu is displeasing and disagreeable to his fellow monks and is neither respected nor esteemed by them. Bhikkhus, possessing eight qualities, a bhikkhu is pleasing and agreeable to his fellow monks and is respected and esteemed by them. What eight? Here, a bhikkhu is not desirous of gains, honor, and reputation. He is one who knows the proper time and who knows moderation. He is pure. He does not speak much. And he does not insult and revile his fellow monks. Possessing these eight qualities, a bhikkhu is pleasing and agreeable to his fellow monks and is respected and esteemed by them.